rights. If you click on the overview, you get these terms. You can click on the terms and get definitions. You get a nice overview of the subject. And as I said, I click on the rate of return and there's the definition. I'm kind of harping on this a bit because of the importance of glossaries for children, um, first gen children, for example, and for children who come from households where there probably where there has not been much discussion about financial terms. And by the way, don't assume anything about your students' backgrounds, about their knowledge of financial terms. Years ago, my oldest daughter and her best friend were in a class, and I don't know quite how they got to it. It was one of those little classes that popped up here in middle school. It only lasted three weeks, but it was about investing. And my daughter's best friend, her dad was a stockbroker. And then there's my daughter, you know, I run the Center for Economic and Financial Education. And the person who taught, was who was assigned to teach this particular little elective was the art teacher. And he spent the entire three weeks terrified that my daughter or her best friend would correct him in class. He told me this. And I wish he had contacted me right away because I would have told them, hey, don't worry about it. They have no idea what you're talking about either. So don't overestimate their background. Even if they come from homes where stocks and where you would assume that investing would be discussed quite a bit. Yeah, not as much as you might think. You can then click on lessons. And uh, there are a whole list of lessons on compound interest. They're arrayed by high school, middle school, elementary school. Some of them require math, some of them do not. For example, the first one is how to become a millionaire from Financial Fitness for Life 912. And there is not a calculation in that lesson at all. And so you can peruse some of these lessons. Now, these are not all the lessons there about compound interest rate. If you have time to play around quite a bit with this flash drive, you will find others. Do you need some tips on teaching about, con uh, about, teaching about compound interest? Well, one of the things that the Council for Econ Education has done well historically is working with teachers. Every publication that CEE writes is reviewed by teachers, is reviewed by concept experts so that you get feedback from people who have been in the classroom at the K-16 level, to be honest, and sometimes beyond. Uh, the first tip is about the rule of 72, which is always a lovely rule to know about. The second one is about Albert Einstein's quote about compound interest, that compounding is the greatest mathematical discovery of all times. And then tip three, and here, this is a really important one. Compounding can be your best friend or your worst enemy. If you're saving and investing over time, compounding works for you. If you're borrowing over a long, over a long period of time, compounding worse, works against you. It also works against you in a short period of time, but not as badly. So if you're saving, it's great. If you're borrowing, not so much. And we have to be careful when we talk about it this way. Because a lot of times people emphasize one or the other, but like many things, it's a dual-edged story. Now, what about online resources? Are there other online resources? Well, it turns out there are. Um, I have only assigned a Paul Solomon video once, and that was to my college students. 
And to say that they were less than enthusiastic really overestimates their response. But some of them are pretty good. So you can scroll through and look at these. Yeah, we've had this glossary sitting there, right? If I hide glossary, you can see if there's that and bar that is the glossary. And right underneath glossary, it says click to hide. If you click to hide, well, a concept video appears. And one of, one of the things you can use concept videos for is to introduce the concept in class. Or you can use it to help students who have missed class review what you covered in class. Because let's be honest, you're doing important things in class and you cannot repeat that over and over and over again to people who can't make it to class that particular day. So where can they go to get a, a, at least a grounding in what you discuss? They can go to these concept videos. But you're sitting there thinking, I know I'm not gonna give them my little flash drive. No, this flash drive is near and dear to me. I'm not giving my student that. So it turns out there is a place you can send them where they can see these concept videos. And that is econedlink.org. Now econedlink.org is the website maintained by the Council for Economic Education. You can register as a teacher. You can register as a student. You can register as a parent. Of course, you would ask your students to register as students. This is a really great place to register as well. Once again, they will not send you emails. What they will send occasionally is an update on some of the new lesson plans they've added to this site. And it appears that the Council for Econ Ed is moving to updating and uh, adding new materials to this site rather, rather than selling them. So it's a good site to know. Once your students have registered as students, you can send them to this link. Let's hope it works. Here we are on Econ and Link. And these are concept videos on things like saving and investing, on compound interest, buying on credit. Notice each of these videos have a quiz associated with it. If we click on the compound interest video and quiz, You can scroll down. There's a brief description of the concept video. We can open the video. And play it. Some strategies for saving money are wiser than others. People keep money in commercial banks, savings and loans, and credit unions because the funds are insured against loss. More importantly, these financial institutions offer interest. Interest is money that a bank, for example, pays you the saver in exchange for keeping your money there. Two types of interest are simple and compound. Let's look at an example of simple interest. If today you put $100 in a savings account that pays 5% simple interest annually, in one year you'd have $105. The $100 that you originally put in is called the principal. The extra $5 is the interest earned. Suppose you leave that $100 principal in the savings account. The next year, you would earn another $5 and have a total of $110 in the account. Every year, the bank would pay you 5% of your $100. Compound interest builds up differently than simple interest. It's earned not only on the principal, but also on the interest earned in prior periods. 
Let's take your $100 principal from the previous example. Remember that you're earning 5% interest, so the first year you'll earn $5. In the second year, you'll earn 5% of $105, which increases your earnings by $5.25. And in the third year, you guessed it, 5% of $110.25, which increases your account by another $5.51. If you keep your money in this account, you'll continue to earn interest on the original principal plus the interest earned in earlier periods. Now, take a look at how your account balance would change over 30 years with the power of compound interest. The red line represents your account balance if you earned interest only on your principal. That's simple interest. And the blue line represents your account balance earning compound interest. Over time, the difference is substantial. Clearly, compound interest gives you more earning power than simple interest. And the earlier in life you begin to invest, the better. You're safe. We won't look at all of this, obviously, but I like the visual on it. It tracks out the difference between simple and compound interest to give students the idea about the power of compound interest. If you really want to have them ooh and ah, send them to this link, econedlink.org slash resources slash compound interest calculator.